So what I was planning to do here with my Sologeny Lime Bay was to take her out of her pot because you can see I've got a conundrum with the new roots that are growing from the new growth. And all I was going to do was take her out and put her in the same pot but as an angle or maybe into a square pot but she would have to go at an angle which would expose the sides here. The roots would then of course be like on the surface of the pot. And I have to say that wasn't exactly too appealing to me, but in order to get the new roots into my lecker, something needs to be done. But on closer inspection, there's a bigger problem here because she is a climber. And even if I were to tilt her, I do believe we would have even bigger issues and I'm not going to use a massive pot in order to accommodate those roots. So what I was thinking instead, is to cut this part off and start a new sologeny in the hopes that the back part will then produce a new growth and I can keep that in the pot the way it is. She doesn't really need a repot, but you see, the next thing that I've got to think about now is the easy cut would be right here. Pretty easy, straightforward, but that only leaves me with two pseudobulbs. The third cut, so that I have three, would be right here. And I don't know if this growth here has roots in the pot. See where I'm coming from. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm happy to have a repot on my hands. I just didn't think it would be such a mental gymnastics kind of repot. But it's good to have you here. I appreciate that you clicked on this video. Thank you for joining me. I think the easiest thing to do here is to cut into this part right here and see if I don't have to unpot the orchid and if I can just get maybe roots out. Now, if I can't get the roots out, then of course these three pseudobulbs are gonna be highly dependent on the roots that are now growing on the new growth, which would set probably the division back. But I'm losing the root tips, even though I put sphagnum moss there, and even on the other side, everything looks a little bit cumbersome. It doesn't seem as straightforward as I thought it would be. Now we've got an engineering feat on our hands. <laughs> Anyway, I think the best course of action is to go with plan B and see what we're up against. So here goes nothing. Ooh! Look at that! I want to save the sphagnum moss in case we need it for other things. Oh, this is awesome. That was easier than I thought. Happy days. Okay, let's keep the sphagnum moss there. Have we got a clean rhizome? Let's give it a little look-see. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking very nice. Happy with that. Oh my. And now, if I tilt the piece, it can be upright in a new separate pot. Okay, <laughs> I could have saved myself all the intro, the doubt, the talk. <laughs> all right, well, let's take this division then, put it away just so that it doesn't blow away. It's a bit of a breezy day today. Put you away and we'll put cinnamon on that cut a little bit later. Okay, Sologenes so have a very, very generous root system. I'm going to readjust you. Ooh, now we've got that out of the way, we can go back to somewhat standard practice repot, but not really because these are the only roots that we have. <laughs> these are the future of this piece, so they have to be very, very secure in the pot. And I'm kind of contemplating that I'm going to use the pseudobulbs as support and grow the orchid in such a manner that she is already way down in the pot and then I can always up pot later, once the roots have established themselves. You see all the root tips I was losing? We can't lose these. So, now the next thing is, will she be secure just with the pseudobulbs resting and a support? Will she hold? Yes. So what I'm going to do, oh my goodness. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a very long video, but hey, hey, it was good there was no roots in the pot. So what I'm going to do is secure the back pseudobulb to my support here, fill with water and fill with lecca. Just give me a moment, make sure my root tips are not going to be bashed against the edge of the pot. Don't want any bashing going on. 
This orchid was once upon a time in bloom for a good part of two years. Only a single spike, unfortunately, but every time she grew a new growth, she grew a new spike. And two spikes in a row had about 13 to 14 blooms sequentially going. My goal with this orchid was to get growths to grow in such a manner that I would get two growths growing at the same time and have two spikes growing at the same time because they're really quite pretty. The last spike on the newest growth, the one that's growing the roots, unfortunately got taken out by a creature. So I only got three blooms from her. But anyway, I suppose it's a good thing because at this stage in time, if I was going to do this anyway, I would have to take that spike off so that this orchid can now reset herself and start off fresh. I have not made a new label for her, so that's not part and parcel of what we're going to see and do in this video. But of course, she is going to get her label where I will determine the date of the division and the date which would then be the same date as the, let's say, the repot today. I do not like what I'm seeing at all but I have no choice. I was thinking of maybe threading a wire in and up and through the rhizome. I'm going to try it with the LECA first. Okay, suddenly our project is becoming as cumbersome as I thought it would be at the beginning, but now on the repot, it's actually the cumbersome part. But I'm gonna fill with water and fill with LECA and see if we can't get some stability out of her through the LECA being around her. And I broke a root tip, you see? Dang, no bueno. There's a root tip in the pot right down there. No bueno. So let's do the water and the lecker. Thankfully, selogenies are not shy in growing roots. However, the roots do not branch until they reach a specific length. That is not the length at which selogeny roots will branch. Selogenies are also water hungry. So I'm going to be using small lecker. Not as much as I thought I would need, but let's give this a go and keep our fingers crossed. No more breakage, please. I'm just gonna hold her in place where I want her. This growth has almost matured, so it's not like I have to anticipate any other form of space if it's gonna come up against the pot, etc. So she can go into the middle, or as far as I'm concerned, just settle where you want. I'm going to fill up the lecker from the back. And I have not sealed the wound at the back yet because I wasn't anticipating that I would need to do this like this. So we're gonna have to see if I keep her above the media or how things go. I can always seal the wound at a later stage. So we'll just let the lecker go gently to the front. Looks all a bit silly with that support the way it is, but this is now not about aesthetics anymore. She holding? Oh, she's holding. This is not about aesthetics, this is about getting her to root in and we can work with the aesthetics at a later stage. Probably in about eight to 10 months. I would think that maybe in October when she normally starts a new growth, hopefully this piece will start a new growth and will not be set back. That is then when we can take her out of the pot and bring her up. This is not fit for purpose and I'm not gonna jiggle around with her anymore. And now the other thing I have to consider is where am I going to put her in the growth space? <laughs> they don't need that much light. To be clear, it's not about the light that they need. They don't need that much of it. It's just the leaves are so long and my growth space at this point in time is a little bit crowded. So when I drain the pot, let me see where that rhizome is and take some lecker away from it so that it can at least have some air to breathe. The lecker doesn't need to be in the back. It can be in the front. Yeah, she's stable. That's the most important thing. I'm going to put her in the grow space and we're going to seal the other cut with some cinnamon. It's shocking how dark it is in here, isn't it? But you see, this selogeny has never failed to bloom for me and she would be in bloom right now if a creature hadn't nipped off the spike. So if you're concerned about not being able to provide enough light for your selogeny, this is the natural light they get because now I have to say the two pieces, but they don't move from this position, not even in the summer. That is their location on the top shelf of my indoor grow space. So they're right next to each other. Now we're just gonna have to wait and see where the OG division is going to send out a new growth. It would be nice if I could see it happening before the summer starts, but 
It's the first time I've divided a Sologeny. So I appreciate that you stayed till the end. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope there was a little something in this video that helped you out. And if you want any more details about my Sologeny Lime Bay, well, always, always feel free to address those in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.